Hi everyone, my name is Suyuan. My lecture today is about long time exposure. I like taking long exposure photo very much. Those images are captured by myself. However, it really annoys me because I need to keep my camera steady. I can only capture the objects that are relatively still to me and I cannot capture daylight without any filter because a very large number of photons will quickly fill the sensor. So how about transform a video to a long exposure image? There are three main points. I use Harris Corner for feature point detection, optical flow for feature point tracking, and I also test three deform and alignment methods. There are simple examples on the right for the three processes. Each of the deform and alignment methods have pros and cons. The template matching is simple, but it only has shift info. The affine is easy to control, but it's less freedom than the homography. But the homography is sensitive to the feature tracking correctness. I mainly use affine and homography in this project. So let's see some results. This is a shuttle I filmed on a tax road. This is computed by a video that filmed on Monday. Zhang and his team won the first round of the rowing competition, and he was waving to us. These are some pictures that computed from old videos. This project brought the past videos to life. After talking about the day, let's talk about the night. What fascinates me the most is fireworks. Night light is more challenging than daylight because the limited dynamic range of camera. The brightness of the fireworks is much greater than the value recorded by camera. I use the prior knowledge here suggested by Adi. I first find the saturated points and set the mass to 0 or 1. Then I use a weighted average to recover the saturated light. Alpha here is a user setting value. I also change the RGB to HSV to preserve the color. User may also want to add some contrast to the image both foreground and the background. Here is a visualization of the process. You first get the average image and you recover the saturated info. You add them up to get the final result. The highlight of this project is that you can first record the video, go home and find the thing you want. You can edit the video, splice it, and then you can get the photo. This image used the same video as the previous image, but you can see those images are really different. If you do not have a video, you can find any Disney fireworks on the streaming website. This is the picture I like most. I always see this kind of photos on the news, and I finally got a similar picture from my video captured in 2019. So is it possible to do motion blur without moving objects? The answer is yes, and you can do with any trajectory of movements using light field camera. In this video, it can be seen that the movement of the foreground objects is relatively small, and the movement of the distant wheel is large. The light field camera can control the movement. Just as the picture shown on the right, the top is moving in an A-shape, and the bottom is a square. Someone will ask, A is not a continuous figure, is it difficult to get it by dragging the camera? I think the answer is yes, but that's the magic of computational photography. You can input any pattern and then get the same motion blur as the pattern. If we take three images by panning the camera, we can get a wider range of motion blur. I wish I could have many light field cameras at the same time. And that's all. Special thanks to Ali's help and thanks for listening.